Zechariah chapter 14, please. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. So it was a really big day last week concerning the 70th anniversary of Israel. Amen. And the whole world is looking at that. There's a lot of tension going on over there. So Robert Jeffress, as you may know, was one of the pastors who spoke. So Israel's 70th anniversary. Boy, there was a lot of heat from right wing and left wing sides. A lot of heat concerning this big event. The two people who prayed, they are known as controversial figures according to liberal news media. And they were John Hagee. And the second one was Robert Jeffress. Now the reason why these two were controversial is because since they're evangelical pastors, they were saying stuff like uh, something that was against different people's religion, intolerance of different religions, and that her, uh, certain hurricanes and natural catastrophes were a result of God's judgment. So that's why there were a lot of liberals that were upset about that. But these two people were the main people who prayed, and this is literally is going to change history, I believe. It's going to set a lot of things of the attention, and it affects a lot of uh, the social climate and everything. So, first of all, we got to understand concerning these two different gentlemen. Now, John Hagee, we're actually, we take this as a negative route. Robert Jeffress, we look at him as more of a positive route, actually. So, this is from the New York Times. The writer is Matthew Hagg. 14th of May, 2018. So the liberal news media titled it this way so that, you know, the pastor seems controversial. Robert Jeffress, pastor who said Jews are going to hell, led prayer at Jerusalem embassy. So they took it that way. But actually, Robert Jeffress, you're going to find out that this Southern Baptist pastor is in line more with what we believe, actually. So we're not saying that Jews are going to hell. What we're saying is if you're an unbelieving Jew, if you don't receive Christ for your salvation, whether Jew or Gentile, it doesn't matter. You're going to hell. But you know how news media likes to word things, right? Amen. That's right. So this man said this. Jeffress said it this way. Judaism. You can't be saved being a Jew. You know who said that, by the way? The three greatest Jews in the New Testament, Peter, Paul, and Jesus Christ. They all said Judaism won't do it. It's faith in Jesus Christ. That's what Robert Jeffress says. I say amen to that. Absolutely. Amen. We fully agree with that. But oh no, the liberal news media and all the world, they take that as big no-no. They take that as negatively. He also said this. Not only do religions like Mormonism, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, not only do they lead people away from the true God, they lead people to an eternity of separation from God in hell. Hell is going to be filled with good religious people who have rejected the truth of Christ. <laughs> Ain't that, that is true. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't believe everything Haggy and Jeffress says. A lot of what they say actually is actually uh, what, uh, not only in, uh, politically incorrect, but even biblically incorrect and not a wise way of saying things. But this, these exact quotes... I say amen to that. I'm 100% for that. Robert, uh, so Mitt Romney actually complained on Twitter. So if there's a Republican, okay, a Republican politician who complains about a pastor, that might, that's like a really a good sign almost. <laughs> Unless you're like Westboro Baptist and other people. Robert Jeffress says you can't be saved by being a Jew. And Mormonism is a heresy from the pit of hell. He said the same about Islam. Such a religious bigot should not be giving the prayer that opens the United States Embassy in Jerusalem. <laughs> That's what Romney tweeted about. May 14, 2018, he tweeted that. So we see right here that this particular gentleman, that what is he dubbed as that the news media dubbed him as? Baptist. So you got to realize this, Baptists are seen mostly as negative. One of our members here said that when he was at Russia, that when you say that this particular denomination, they take this as something a negative reaction. They don't want anything to do with these people. 
But you see, this is all predicted by the Word of God. So you got to realize this, the New World Order, of course it's not called that right now, it's the United Nations, has the whole world thinking concerning about Israel. When the attention is on Israel, what they're thinking is this. They take this view as negative. They take this view as negative, not positive. And they take Haggy's view, actually, as even though there's a lot of liberal news media that attack him, they do take him as positive because of why. Because Haggy is the one who actually tolerates different religions. Now, I'm not saying all religions. There's one religion that he tolerates with, and that's Judaism. John Haggy believes that if you are a Jew, just born by ethnicity a Jew, you don't need to receive Jesus Christ for your salvation. He thinks that you're automatically saved, you're going to heaven. Now, that is heresy. That is utmost heresy. We do not believe in that nonsense. This is from the Houston Chronicle, actually. And you know what? They took it down. I wonder why they took it down, the Houston Chronicle. Quote, Haggy said, The Jewish people have a relationship to God through the law of God as given through Moses, Haggy said. I believe that every Gentile person can only come to God through the cross of Christ. Okay, so we say amen to that. But he said every Gentile person. You notice that? Why? Because he's going to make something more specific here. He continues, I believe that every Jewish person who lives in the light of the Torah, which is the word of God, has a relationship with God and will come to redemption. That is not true. He says, the law of Moses is sufficient enough to bring a person into the knowledge of God until God gives him a greater revelation and God has not. Baloney, he did give a revelation. Did you read Galatians 3? He did not read Galatians 3. The law is not sufficient for salvation. The law is supposed to lead you to faith in Jesus Christ. So there's your greater revelation. Did, law of Moses, that's it. There's no greater revelation. Baloney. Haggy giving his interpretation of Romans 11.25. Listen, Paul abandoned the idea of Jews knowing Christ. In the book of Romans, he said, I am now going to go to the Gentiles from this time forward. So we took this as an idea, obviously, that because the Jews kept rejecting Jesus Christ, God turned to the Gentiles, right? But Haggy's reinterpreting this in a way where you know, Paul gave up the Jews and turned to the Gentiles. So the cross of Christ's salvation is for Gentiles, not for Jews. So the Jews' way of salvation is how they always did things in Judaism. That's his interpretation of it. <laughs> Judaism doesn't need Christianity to explain its existence, but Christianity has to have Judaism to ex explain its existence. Wow, look at that. See, what a way to play with words. As if, you know, he's trying to raise up, elevate Judaism more than Christianity. See, now this quotation is actually true. He is right about that. But it's so clever. He did it deliberately so he can elevate what? Judaism above Christianity. And we fully disagree with that. Now the thing is this, is that, so the whole eye is on this. Now the world is going to see this way. The world sees it that Christians or God's saints, you got to realize this. They're all supporting what? The Jews, nation of Israel. Usually the liberal world, the UN, is negative toward this. You know why? Because that's predicted in the Bible. It has to happen. United Nations, that's right, will go against the nation of Israel. How is it that they will go against the nation of Israel and persecute God's saints? Why, it's easy. You're seeing it right now. As a matter of fact, the liberal thinking is this, and the world's thinking is this, is that if you're a Christian, you're going to support the Jew. That's what they're thinking. If uh, you're a Christian, you're going to side in with Republicans or right-wing. And if you're a right-winger, you're going to be supportive of the nation of Israel. That's what they're thinking, the world. 
The whole world's automatically thinking like that. You know why? Because that thinking is necessary where the Antichrist, when the tribulation occurs, so we are in the church age right now, so this tension has to come up where the world is against the Jews and the saints. And when they're against the Jews and God's saints, eventually this antagonism can lead to persecution. That has to happen. Because why? These guys are the nut jobs. These guys are the crazy people. So here is the tribulation. But here's another thing. The devil can also use the side of John Hagee where, you know, all you have to do is be a Jew to be saved. That's it. You don't have to receive Christ for your salvation. Well, that kind of thinking, the Antichrist, isn't he a Jew? So are you saying that the Antichrist is automatically a saved person? So you got one side where they will be antagonistic toward Jews and Christians. And then the other side where they're so over supportive of Israel, where they think they're automatically saved, they're going to side in with the Antichrist because he's a Jew. Why? The Antichrist has to make a covenant with the Jews. See, the devil's covering all bases. Let's look at Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather what? All nations against Jerusalem to battle. See that? United nations. They're going to go against Israel. That's why this current events have to happen where they will be antagonistic toward Israel. And the city shall be taken, and the house is rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And then also look at verse 11. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So notice right here, the Lord is going to send peace in Jerusalem one day when he rules. But look at this. The people who go against Israel, you know what your punishment's going to be if you go against the nation of Israel? And uh, look at verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holds, and their tongue shall be consumed away in their mouth. <laughs> you sure want to side with these guys, right? You sure want to join them in being antagonistic against Israel, right? You don't want to join that side, trust me, okay? Well, you know, Israel has some wrong policies right here. Israel has their flaws. There was some kind of police uh, military abuse on those poor Palestinians. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? News media always give, par uh, always give truth. That's true. Partial truth. Compared to the Palestinian side, did they cover that side? See, look, it doesn't matter which nation. Every single nation, especially Israel, has problems. Okay? But you know what God wants you to be? He wants you to be on this side. Why? Because this side is eventually going to be the good guy, you got to realize. Let's also look at verse 14. Uh, 13 and 14. See that? The nations of Israel are united together and they fight against united nations. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know about you, but if I'm listening in the world, Israel or United Nations, their kind of news, okay, their kind of, uh, their kind of arguments, policies, whatever, all right, I'd side more with this one than this guy, okay? Because eventually this guy, his policy is going to go against this nation and this nation will come out on top at the end. Let's keep reading right here. Verse, I mean, look at the punishment. The Lord's not kidding around. Look at verse 16. Uh, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. See that? All of them are against Israel. And they, let's say that you're left over. You didn't get slaughtered by God. Shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> Boom! You're still going to bow the knee. You're still going to submit to this as a superior nation. This is so politically incorrect, is it not? This is so, you know, biased and tolerant. No, this is Bible. That's what's going to happen. But guess what? If you're acting like these guys where you adore Israel and you think that 
absolutely nothing of israel is wrong all of its policies are flawless everything it does is is flawless you don't want to be that guy because there is one person who's going to claim to be a jew the antichrist see and he's going to be the antichrist he's going to claim to be a jew and then all these crazy numbskulls who learn from churches let's side with israel and let's say these people are not saved Christians. They're right-wingers, they're Catholics, uh, they're Mormons, they're re good, honest Republicans. And they will side in with the Antichrist with this policy with Israel. But guess what? In the midst of the tribulation, in the middle, he betrays the nation of Israel. And when he betrays the nation of Israel, thus the United Nations can follow more closely with the Antichrist. Not only that, in the middle of the tribulation, Revelation 13, if you read that, it says the whole world wondered after the beast. He gets the whole world. At the beginning stage of the tribulation, as you've already learned, the Antichrist still goes through conflict. He's the United Nations side. But he's still going against rogue nations, which are who? I brought up the proposition that it's, it can be uh, Russia, its communist nations, and Muslim nations. So I see that all over the Bible, Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog. Because I see it in current events, past history, and even today. So that seems like very likely. So you see this kind of conflict, it's very interesting when you look at current events, how things are getting in play of what the Bible predicted. Now look at Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25. You know what you got to do? There's a heresy called replacement theology. So there are two heresies. One heresy is, I believe, dual covenant theology by John Hagee. In other words, one, uh, the covenant God did with Israel, they're automatically saved. Covenant with us is with, through Jesus Christ. So that's heresy. The Antichrist can use that one, dual covenant theology. But guess what? The Antichrist can also use this one called replacement theology. Replacement theology teaches that the church replaced the nation of Israel. So Israel absolutely has no play in being the good guy or being God's saints in the future. That is absolutely not true. The Lord will side. You read the verses as Zechariah 14. God is going to side with his nation. And here are these numbskulls all over the internet too. And you got to watch out for this kind of stuff. We are familiar already with the conspiracies, the evil elites. I mean, Hollywood, bankers, Rothschild. We know all that kind of stuff connected with the Jews, okay? We already know that. But guess what? We already told you the Antichrist is going to be a Jew. So we're not dumb, okay? We're not that dumb. But you got to realize this, is that the Antichrist, who's from those elites and etc., he's going to turn against the nation of Israel in the midst of the tribulation. And you have to side with the nation of Israel in the tribulation. If you don't, and you act like this dumb replacement theology heresy, then guess what? You're going to lose your salvation in the tribulation. Now, we're talking about tribulation salvation here. In the church age, your salvation is simply receiving Christ by faith. Okay? It has nothing to do with whether you side in with Jews or not. But in here, this salvation, you have to not only have faith in Christ, you have to side in with the Jews. Because if you don't, then you're going to join the, these other guys. Look at Matthew 25. Well, I'm not going to side in with the Antichrist, and I don't have to help out the Jewish nation. I don't have to support the nation of Israel. Well, if you're that type of guy, look at your salvation. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, <coughs> and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you. From where? The foundation of the world. So notice right here. So I'm going to have to put somewhere right here. The millennium is God's earthly kingdom, kingdom on earth. That kingdom is from where? The foundation of the earth. Is that correct? It said when the Son of Man comes down from His glory. So He's coming down, Matthew 25, His second advent. When He comes down, He's going to sit on the throne of His glory, and that verse is the throne of His glory that's considered 
to be the earthly kingdom when he rules on the earth. But he's judging these what? Nations. See that? Nations. So if you side this bunch, you better be careful. Because he's going to judge the nations based on what? How they side with Israel. That's why this antagonism, this UN antagonism toward Israel is necessary. Because why? The Antichrist needs that so that the nations who go against the nation of Israel can lose their salvation. Because your salvation is depended as a nation to support Israel. Keep reading. For I was unhungered, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Notice here these people were feeding the Jews, visiting them in prison. This doesn't make sense. How does that happen unless we're talking about the tribulation where the Jews are persecuted, hungry because they don't have the mark, and also that they're imprisoned because of persecution. So this is feeding the Jews because God says right here in verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So how you feed and all that is the least of these, my brethren. Christians automatically assume that's referring to saved fellow Christians. No, no, that is, no, that is totally off. The brethren here, you got to realize this. Matthew, written, first New Testament book right here we see. You know what, whenever you look up the, look up the word brethren by the author Matthew, you know what that's referring to? It's referring to Jews. You might say, really? Yeah, look at Matthew 23, Matthew 23. Matthew 23, <clears throat> verse 8. Matthew 23, verse 8. This is Jewish context. This is a Jewish context. How you feed, this is supporting brethren. And who is the brethren? They're Jews. Look at Matthew chapter 23. And we will read verse 8. But be not ye called what? Rabbi. See, this is Jewish. For one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are what? Brethren, see that? He's talking about his own, literally his own people, where he was born from as a Jew. This is rabbi. This is Jews right here. See that? So you have to support the Jews because they suffer persecution from the Antichrist. So notice right here that the devil can use replacement theology or people who will side in with the UN where they will not support and take care of the Jews. And because of that, they can lose their salvation. Keep reading Matthew 25, and we'll close it. Matthew 25. Look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Why? Because they failed to feed, to clothe. At verse 42 and 43. And who are these people? Verse 45, the brethren again. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. See that? So these two men who did the prayer made a significant thing in history. You know what it was? It built up more antagonism with, the whole, with all the nations siding with this against Israel. And also it built up... John Hagee as the highlight where all the Jews think these, uh, what he's saying is good and it's right. And there are these dumb Christians and churches who side with him. So then when the tribulation happens, the Antichrist, all he has to do is act like a Jew. And if John Hagee, if, if he's not saved, then him and all the people he deceived, they're all going to what? Go side with this guy right here. So the devil is not stupid, you got to understand. He covers all sides and all bases because he wants every soul to burn in hell forever. Unless you're a Bible-believing Christian, you find the right balance in between, you're not going to get deceived and fooled by this nonsense.